Hello, I'm Pastor Gray with Calvary Community Church, Matawan, Michigan, and welcome to our video teaching ministry. This week's Sunday, we're going to be talking about the Seder meal and the significance of the Seder meal interspersed with what happened to the 12 disciples. Next week, Sunday, on Palm Sunday, we're going to be at um, uh, 10 in the morning, 6 at night, we're going to be having the Living Last Supper. We have 13 men that are going to be betraying the the Leonardo da Vinci's painting, The Living Last Supper. Love to have you come and join then. But right now I want to have a word of prayer. Father, I ask for your word to come to me, for your wisdom from your Holy Spirit, to engage and educate your people that are watching this video and who show up in worship on Sunday. In your name we pray. Amen. Seder meal. The Passover meal, instituted by Moses, really by Yahweh God, when the Jewish people left the land of Egypt. Seder meal is still, is still celebrated by Jewish individuals. It's an amazing, wonderful meal. And there are so many significant aspects within the Seder meal, the Passover meal, and what we, what I call, Christians call, the Lord's Supper. I'm going to just hit a couple of them right now. The first is, before the Seder meal starts, the wife has to clean the entire house to get rid of all the leaven, all the yeast, all the leaven. And then they call the rabbi in, and the rabbi will come in and declare the house clean. But they always leave a little bit of leaven so that the husband is able to take the leaven with a feather and put it into a cloth and take it throw it out of the house and say, now the house is clean. I love that aspect of the Seder meal because what does Jesus say about leaven? He says in Mark 5, or excuse me, Mark 8, verse 15, be careful, Jesus warned, watch out for the yeast, the leaven of the Pharisees and for that of Herod. What he's referring there is watch out for the sin of the religious leaders if they lead you astray. I'd say today, watch out for the sin of religious leaders who are not teaching us to follow Scripture, what Scripture has to say. Watch out for that sin. Get rid, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 5, get rid of the old yeast that you may have a new batch without yeast. In, in other words, get rid of your sin in your life so that you can walk with Jesus Christ. That's the beginning part of the Seder meal. I love that aspect. Another aspect of the Seder meal I, I really love is the cups of wine. They have four different cups of wine. And it's after the meal that Jesus picks up the cup and he says, this blood is my blood shed for the forgiveness of your sins. We know that cup was called the cup of redemption to buy back. From Moses' day until Jesus Christ's day, the third cup titled the cup of redemption he takes it and said this is my blood shed for the forgiveness of your sins he redeems us christ buys us back christ pays for my sin pays for your sin and how does he do that he does it on the cross there's an aspect within the seder meal which is so wonderful they they have a and i'm going to really kill the names i won't say but it's a, a compartment that they they put matzah bread in and in the middle compartment, what they do is they take it and they end up breaking it and they put part of it, they put part of it in, 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 in that napkin and they put the other part in this section, which becomes the dessert for later on. And then this is hidden. I, I love that aspect, that, that the middle section is broken and half of it is hidden. Does that remind you of anything? Does that remind you that Jesus Christ gave his life on the cross and then he was buried, buried for three days and he resurrected? Man, friends, if you get an opportunity, just Google, just Google um, Seder Meal by Jews for Jesus. It's a 30, 45 minute video that will teach you so much about the history of the Seder Meal. These are just three simple examples of, of how God, Yahweh God, instituted something with Moses, fulfilled in Jesus Christ, and that we today can still walk in. 
knowing that Christ gave his life for us, he was buried, he was crucified, he was buried, he was resurrected, knowing that he is the one that redeems my life, redeems your life. Well, this week, Sunday morning, I'm going to talk about what happens to all of the 12 disciples. We're doing that before the play on Palm Sunday. Brothers and sisters in Christ, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he lift up his face and grace upon you. Amen. Thank you for watching, and I, um, I encourage you to be in worship someplace this week, Sunday, next week, Sunday, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter morn. Have a blessed day.